Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are my AAPI recommendations. So here in the States, the month of May is known as Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And so in order to celebrate that, I've come up with a list of some books that I think would be great to read during this month. And at the very end, I will give a couple books that are on my TBR that have just come out that I hope to read during this month. Let's get started then, shall we? The first book that I would like to recommend is Strike the Zither by Joan He. This is the first book in a duology and it kind of plays with Chinese mythology as well as war strategy and it has a really badass main character. So we follow our main character who is a war strategist and she is trying to help this lord or this lady kind of rise up in the ranks of the world and so there's a lot of like undercover doing this meeting with this person, going head to head with other war strategists and everything like that. And then there's a huge twist at the end. So if you are into mythology, then this would be a great book for you. Continuing on the theme of mythology, I would also like to recommend Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is again the first book in a duology. The second book is The Heart of the Sun Warrior. I have read both books and they were really good. So these are written by Su Lin Tan and they are based off of Chinese mythology. You are following the daughter of the moon goddess as her mother is imprisoned on the moon and her father is who knows where. Is he dead? Is he alive? Nobody really knows. So she leaves the moon to try and free her mother and try and figure out what has happened to her family. This was such a beautiful and lyrically written book and it just it was amazing. So again, now for a fantasy book that is inspired by Asian culture, I just read and absolutely adored A Magic Steeped in Poison, another first book in a duology. This is by Judy I. Lin and I read the first book and I cannot wait to start the second book. This book is amazing because of the magic system and the world building. The way that tea is how you perform magic. Tea itself isn't magic, but you can't do it without the tea either. It's just a beautiful story and our main character is entering in a competition to be the next um, tea person for the emperor. Um, as a plague is kind of going through, a poison really is going through the kingdom and her younger sister is also affected by this. So she's also trying to find a way to save her younger sister. Oh, again, amazing cultural aspects and the character relationships and dynamics in this one were just so interesting and it kept me on the edge of my seat. All I wanted to do was read this book and drink tea and that's pretty much all I did. Now for my last fantasy based recommendations, I'm gonna have to go with Babel by R.F. Kuang. Of course, I would recommend this for AAPI. Our main character is a man from China who was taken from China actually as a young boy and brought to England in order to study at Oxford, at Babel at Oxford, which is the fantastical element here, to study translation. This is my favorite book of all time and really anything by R.F. Kuang is probably really good to read, but if you like historical fiction or magic through translation and silver, complex magic system, this, you need to pick this up. It may look chalky, but you will fly through it. Now let's move on to some contemporary books. The first one I'm going to just quickly recommend, even though I've talked about it a lot on this channel, Tokyo Ever After by Miko Jean. First book in a duology. It is about a Japanese American main character. She was born and raised in the States, but then finds out her father is actually the crown prince of Japan. So she decides to go to Japan, meet her family, and kind of see a glimpse of what her life would have been like had she actually grown up in Japan as the daughter of the crown prince. So if you like The Princess Diaries, but you need like an Asian version of it, like a crazy rich Asians version, this should be your go-to for the month of May. I would also very much recommend The Love Boat 
right now duology but there's actually another book coming out love boat forever i am so excited i adored both of these books and it, it's it they seem like a perfect fit for aapi heritage month because you are following main characters in a group of friends who have chinese or taiwanese heritage their parents or their grandparents or someone and so they go on this love boat program where they go to taipei and they learn to speak mandarin they learn about their culture they learn like the fan dance and they get to explore and see where their families are from so i think it's perfect for this month in this one the first one you are following a dancer who she just wants to dance and her parents are not very supportive so they make her go on this program and the second one you are following a woman who is trying to get into the STEM fields. She is trying to make it as an Asian American woman in STEM and the difficulties that she faces. And then she ends up going back to Taiwan for a reunion. And, and it's amazing. And it's, but these are by Abigail Heng Wen. And I don't know too much about what Love Boat Forever is about. All I know is that there's a cover and I cannot wait. Now this next one is a book that just came out and I read it so quickly. It is hilarious and it's written by one of my coming up favorite authors, question mark. That is Jessie Q. Sutanto and her book, Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. So again, anything really written by Jessie Q. Sutanto, in my experience, has been amazing. I haven't read all of her backlist. I read the Dial A for Auntie's duology that I cannot wait to read new girl which is her dark academia anyway i digress this follows vera wong who is this chinese old lady who owns a tea house in chinatown in san francisco i believe one day she finds a dead body on the floor of her tea house and she takes it upon herself to investigate because the cops are inadequate <laughs> and so it's a hilarious but also a heartwarming heartfelt book of Asian American characters who come together over this murder, murder, whether for better or for worse. And oh my goodness, it was so funny. Now, if you like baking or food contemporaries, this would be a good one for you. And it is A Taste of Love. And this is by Jennifer Yen. So this follows a girl whose parents run this Asian themed bakery. I believe they are Chinese. All of their baking is inspired by Chinese flavors and Chinese recipes, and it's just amazing to read about. And her mom hosts this baking competition every year. However, this year it's going to be a little different because this year her mom is on a mission to find her a boyfriend. This is a fun YA contemporary romance. Now this next book is actually one of my many current reads and it is called Sway With Me and this is by Saeed and Masood and this features South Asian main characters in the United States. So we've got our main male character who is very much a shut-in, doesn't know anything about being a teenager, just studies and lives with his grandfather in a very low-key intellectually driven household. And then you have our female main character who is the spice of life. She is a dancer and she gets into trouble and so they end up striking some sort of deal of she is going to help him and he is going to help her through dancing. There we go. So far I am enjoying it. I am not quite halfway through but so far this seems to be a pretty cute YA contemporary. All right, I've got two other books on my TBR that are coming out in the month of May or have recently come out that I cannot wait to read. One of them is actually my book club pick. It is called Throwback and it is by Maureen Gu. So this actually follows a Korean American who kind of gets thrown back in time. I don't know if she goes to Korea or if she's still in the States, but she kind of has to help her mom win prom queen. So I'm very excited to read this one. I think it'll be a great one for our book club. The other book on my TBR is Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Cher Lee. 
This is a queer Asian American romance. I am so excited. I honestly don't really know much more about it. Other than that, I mean, Mooncakes makes me think of the Lunar Festival. And so it's celebratory, it's gay, and it's coming out in the mid of May. So that is another one that I am putting on my DBR and hopefully recommending as well. Those are all my recommendations. If you like them, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you will be reading this month. I always love to hear from you. Also feel free to hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell. I have gone down to posting one video um, a week, hopefully, <laughs> as I will be having a lot of things happening. So I'm gonna do my best to have one video going up a week. So make sure you hit the bell to be notified when those go up. I also have bookish social media link down below that you can follow me there and get more updates on what I'm reading and what I'm thinking about them. But that is everything. So until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.